In this video, we're going to look at a molecular orbital diagram for diatomic molecules for the N equals 2 energy level of the periodic table. And to label the MO diagram, we're going to look at uh, how two different atoms and their 2s orbitals can overlap. So this would be atom number 1, atom number 2, and each atom having a 2s orbital available to it, we would have overlap on the axis that connects the nuclei, so that is sigma overlap. And also the p orbitals, if this is atom number 1, if two of the p orbitals, this is the nucleus and this is the nucleus, two of those p orbitals are also going to overlap in the sigma fashion. So if both of these were p orbitals along the x direction, for example, then we would also have sigma overlap from the 2p orbitals. Recall that on an atom, I'm looking at the n equals 2 energy level, there's the 2s orbital and then the three 2ps. So the p orbitals that are along the same axis will overlap in the sigma fashion. And then two of the p orbitals are going to overlap in the pi fashion. So we have to imagine that third, this orbital would be going in the y direction. And we have to imagine this one projected at 90 degrees from the paper into the z direction. So when we're labeling the MO diagram, we're going to label the 2s orbital overlap as a sigma bond, the p overlap, one set of p orbitals will constitute a sigma bond, and then for example the p in the y direction, this is a pi bond, and then the other p orbitals that project out of the paper along the z-axis, so that dotted line's trying to show that that's behind the paper, p in the z-direction will also overlap in the pi fashion. And these two uh, bonding orbitals have the same energy as each other, so they're degenerate. And the sigma bonding is more favorable, so this is going to be lower in energy when we have this case. So to draw the molecular orbital diagram, we're going to use valence electrons only. And then we don't have to show the 1s overlap. So if we use valence electrons only to construct a molecular orbital diagram, so that's an MO diagram. We're only going to use the 2s and the 2p subshell. And then I'm going to have to get a separate piece of paper to show this. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the page. And if we show, for example, we'll do, let me write this up here. We'll do the MO diagram for oxygen, O2. So if we're looking at valence electrons, there are two atoms. Each oxygen has six electrons. So we're going to put 12 electrons in the MO diagram when we're finished with it. So this will be similar to atomic orbital theory where we put electrons in and keep them opposite spins, or if we have the same energy level, the electrons will stay unpaired. So that same concept will carry over to an MO diagram. So now I'm going to go to the bottom of the page and show energy increasing as we go up the periodic table. So we're going to start with low energy. So this is high energy, and remember in chemistry this means unstable or not happy. 
So the lowest energy level, we're going to put lay down here at the bottom, and we're pretending that we're building stable molecules, and we're going to see the reason they're stable is the molecular orbital, the molecular orbitals are lower in energy than the atomic orbitals. So if we look at one oxygen atom, so here's O atom, number one, and then O atom, number two, our textbook shows the atomic orbitals above each atom. And I think this just helps keep the diagram straight. And recall from an earlier slide that we can have constructive overlap of waves. So when two atoms are within proximity of each other, uh, we'll get this favorable, lower in energy, overlap or bond, and then a higher in energy overlap. So the destructive wave interference that comes from those crazy equations will cause this overlap to be higher in energy than the individual atomic orbitals. So to label this, we'll call this sigma 2s, because the 2s orbitals are overlapping, and sigma star 2s. And that star means higher in energy or anti-bonding. So the 2s orbital overlap looks identical to a 1s orbital overlap. Two atomic orbitals are going to give us two molecular orbitals. Now for the p overlap, I'm going to split the difference, the distance that I've got on this paper, and put the set for atom number two, it's P subshell. Here in atom number one, we'll put this P subshell directly across from that. And again, the two separate P orbitals that lie along the same axis uh, can overlap in the sigma fashion. So that will give us a lower in energy overlap. So we've got to leave room to put electrons in the orbitals and also to label that. So we'd have one overlap. We'll label sigma 2p, because that's that sigma fashion bonding that we saw here. So one of the three p orbitals from each atom will overlap in the sigma fashion. The two remaining atomic orbitals on each oxygen are going to overlap in the pi fashion, above and below the nucleus and front and back of each nucleus. And those two orbitals have the same energy. It's not as favorable as overlap in between the nuclei, so we're going to draw two orbitals higher in energy than the sigma bond. So if we wanted to draw those two lines, really doesn't matter, these lines out to the side, I think that just helps keep things straight. But this would be pi overlap from the 2p orbitals. And then we're going to look at the simplest case where there's a mirror image reflection across the axis that joins the atomic orbitals. So we'll have two equivalent in energy or two degenerate pi overlap slightly above the atomic orbital energy level. We'll call this pi star 2p and then because the sigma overlap was lower in energy the unfavorable overlap is going to end up being much higher in energy. And so we get a pattern. This would be sigma star 2p. Generally, when I'm drawing these with the three p orbitals overlap, I'll put the sigma much lower in energy and the sigma star much higher in energy. I'll fill those two in first, and then the remaining two 
atomic orbitals, I'll put two of those orbitals lower in energy and then slightly lower and two slightly higher. So this is really the energy level of the atomic orbitals here. So that will be the case for the S overlap as well. If we kind of join those atomic orbitals as far as their energy level, there's always going to be lower energy overlap, which is favorable and stabilizes the molecule, and a higher energy overlap, which is the destructive interference, and that will destabilize the molecule. And then the P's, that is favorable overlap in the sigma fashion, much higher unfavorable overlap, so sigma star. And then these two sets of atomic orbitals, there are four of them. We're going to make four molecular orbitals, two lower in energy than the atomic level and two higher in energy. So this business in the middle is really the MO diagram. This out to the side may be useful in constructing this, but we really don't need that. Now we're going to go back up to our electron count, and we have 12 electrons, 12 valence electrons in the molecule oxygen. So we'll put those in in order using the Aufbau principle, which is putting electrons in and starting with the lowest energy first. So our low energy level is here. So we'll put one, two electrons there, three, four, five, six. Since these have the same energy level, we'll put seven, eight. We'll keep those electrons unpaired. And we've still got four more to go. There's nine, 10, 11, 12. So the, let me get this camera up a little bit. The molecular orbital diagram for the valence electrons on oxygen uh, looks like this. Not really that useful. Uh, again, this is just an, an introduction to this theory. And what we're going to do is count electrons and calculate the bond order. So bond order is all of the bonding electrons. So bonding minus antibonding. And the antibonding are those destabilizing higher energy orbitals, and then we're going to divide by two. So the reason we have to label the antibonding orbitals is to calculate the bond order. So if we look, I'm going to circle this higher energy electrons so I can count them easier. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the lower energy bonding orbitals. So bond order, I call that BO. Our bond order is 8 minus, when we look at the antibonding orbitals that destabilize the molecule, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 8 minus 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. And a bond order of 2 means we have a double bond. And we've drawn the dot structure quite a few times for oxygen. So that this theory would verify that. If we draw oxygen's dot structure, we see we put all 12 valence electrons on, and we see that the bo oops, bond order of 2 shows up from the dot structure. Now, one of the main reasons we look at molecular orbital theory is it explains uh, magnetism, which is not explained by Lewis dot structures or hybrid orbitals. So unpaired electrons will respond in a magnetic field. So if we have unpaired electrons, they're going to spin in the same direction. That's a lower energy scenario. 
and that also causes magnetism. So unpaired electrons, the term for that is paramagnetic. And this means it responds to a magnetic field. And there's a really nice picture of liquid oxygen. If we pour liquid oxygen between the poles of a magnet, so if that's a magnet and that's a magnet, and we pour liquid oxygen through there, through two poles of a magnet, that liquid will stay right here in between those two poles, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and again, MO theory does explain that. If we look at the Lewis dot structure, we can't see that there are unpaired electrons in the oxygen molecule. So the complex the, the complexity of the MO diagram is going to stop right here for general chemistry. If you read, there are different S and P interactions depending on where atoms are on the periodic table and their uh, electronegativity values and so forth. So you may see the ordering vary here, but this is the simplest case which is all I look at in my general chemistry class.